Hey guys, it's Austin with Out Jeeping. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a new way on how to solve heat soak in your Jeep Cherokee XJ. So if you don't know already, on many Jeep 4.0s, about 2000 and up, they have a problem with the heat soak issue. That's the problem across many models, the Jeep Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, and Wrangler that are all equipped at the 4.0. Basically this problem happens is because they have two pre-catalytic converters right off the exhaust manifold. And with these pre-catalytic converters, they cause an excessive amount of heat that's trapped in the engine bay, and it results in the fuel rail and injectors heating up and vaporizing the fuel in the fuel rail. So if the Jeep's been running up to operating temperature and you go and shut it off, and then come back 10 minutes later to start it up, you'll notice that it almost has like a misfire. It feels like it's misfiring and the engine's shaking a little bit. Now there are a couple ways on going around on how to get rid of this issue and one of those would be is getting a heat shield kit that wraps around the injectors and fuel rail. It's basically a reflective wrap that helps keep all the heat away so that the fuel does not vaporize. Another way is basically taking spark plug boots and putting them over the fuel injectors that way to uh, block off any heat also. And then another way is upgrading injectors because OEM injectors that come with 4.0s, they're more prone to having the uh, vapor lock in them. If you upgrade to 4-hole or 12-hole, people say that the issue has gone completely away. Now what I have done today is completely different than any other solution out there. And it's a little more complex, but it was part of my engineering class in high school uh, to come up with something new. And it works efficiently too. So let's pop the hood and take a look. All right, so basically what I've came up with is having air blow across the fuel system with the injectors and fuel rail to basically remove all the hot air that's around it and that causes a vapor lock. And to do that, I got this hose down here which helps blow in some air. And this leads all the way back to the factory air box where I have a marine bilge fan inside there. And I have that fan wired to a thermal switch which is on the fuel rail over here. You probably can't see it but I'll show you in a little bit. Basically, when that hits 130 degrees, which is the temperature where vapor lock starts to occur, the, can the fan will kick on and help blow out all the hot air that's around the fuel system. And not only is it tied into this fan, but it's also tied into the factory electric fan that's on the radiator. So to help direct the air a little bit, I got this heat shield on top here, and it basically helps uh, make sure this air you know, flows out through the whole entire fuel system. And then I also made a base plate down here to help reflect any heat as possible down below. So I'm going to pop off this air box and I'll show you what's inside. So under the air filter here we have a bilge fan built in right here and then we also have two wires leading to it and these wires go to a relay and the relay is triggered by that thermal switch. So here's a better view of that bilge fan and it fits nicely in here and actually I've used a 96 and down air box because it actually has a flat edge over here compared to the one that came in the 2001 where it has uh, more of a jaggedy wall on there. And then this piping right here is just uh, some generic stuff you can get at the auto parts store. I think it was like 10 bucks. So when making this top shroud piece it actually took a lot of work, a lot of uh, test fitting. And I made it so on this side you can use the factory wire harness that goes on top of these uh, head bolts, you know, it all clips in. So basically it's just sandwiched down there. And I have three holes along there to uh, have the wire harness stick through. Now on the other side, I basically just tied it into the fuel rail bolts onto the intake manifold. And then I made a half circle here that would uh, help hold this in place so this doesn't wiggle around at all. Now for these throttle cables, I basically just cut a hole so that it would fit in there nicely. I was hoping it would be a little bit more airtight, but it's not. It is a little bit difficult to get to this bolt down here. Uh, basically, I just need to get a swivel on there. But everything can still easily be accessed. As you can see down here, this is where I have the thermal switch. I got two spade connectors going to it. Another thing too is how I wired it into the factory electric fan. I basically just spliced another power wire into the power wire of the electric fan. And I kept the original harness on here, so this still turns on when the AC is on. 
Now, the only problem with that is that the bilge fan also turns on when you have the AC on, but that's not a big deal at all. Basically, I didn't want to completely bypass the factory system. I just have it so it's like a fan override. So in the near future, I'm actually going to remove this whole entire uh, cooling process because I actually got 12 hole injectors and those are basically not prone to having vapor lock on temperatures that are in the engine bay. People say it solves their heat soak issues. And another thing is, is I got rid of my pre catalytic converters that are right after the exhaust manifold. I basically just got a federal emissions Y pipe and replaced it right there. So that should help keep the temperatures down in the engine bay quite a bit. So I'm going to drive the Jeep a little bit and warm it up and I'll show you how it works in action. So I did kind of create a poster here because it was for my engineering class uh, during my senior year of high school. And as I come over here, I have a problem statement. Basically, it's on all the uh, Jeeps that have the 4.0 after 2000 with a, our California emissions equipped on the 4.0. And basically, I said when the temperature in the fuel system reaches over 130 degrees, vaporization starts to occur. And then once you start up a vehicle, a misfire will start to occur. And that's basically engine bay down there. Then over here is my proposed solution of the cowling air box. Basically I explain right here on how I designed the air box and how the electric fan and inlet ducting work and then the electric fan wiring down here. Then I show how I constructed the prototype and as you can see I got some pictures. That was the bilge fan inside the air box. Then I show down here on how I constructed the heat shield that goes around the fuel system. As you can see, I have it on the head bolts and then the plastic wiring harness protector kind of clips right in and sandwiches it in place. And this is what it looks like not on the engine. Coming up here, I explain all the prior solutions and attempts and I mentioned that earlier. Basically, uh, the company Design Engineering has this kit out there which basically wraps around your fuel rail and injectors. Um, it's kind of like Velcro kit which is nice and simple and it basically has a bunch of reflective properties on it so it keeps a temperature down in the fuel system. So I believe there actually was a recall on this on some models of Jeeps and basically Mopar had a solution to basically take like little thermal strips going around the uh, fuel injectors to help keep the temperatures down. And then down here I show basically different uh, possible solutions I could do. Cowling air box was number one, which is what I did. Or I can do a pre-cat location, improved heat shield kit, and a cooling fan timer for your factory electric fan. Here's a little diagram on how I have the air system set up. Basically cooler air from the side of the engine would go in and then all the hot air that's around the fuel system would leave out. Now I was going to put a little ducting that would leave from the fuel system out through the uh, cowling over here and I decided not to do that. It would be uh, more work but it still ended up being just fine by having air blow around here. So I basically just want to show you guys this before I remove the whole system from my Jeep. I know a couple of people asked about this. Sorry it's been a while, like almost a year since I have put this in my Jeep but hopefully it can help someone if they want to do something similar or maybe just have the electric fan hooked up to a thermal switch. I mean something simple like that could probably solve the issue too. Alright guys that does it for today's video. Sorry it wasn't an install on how this works but basically just uh, show what I did. Hopefully it can help you guys in the future if you want to do something similar to what I did. I'm all about sharing ideas for everyone in the Jeep community. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the OutJeeping YouTube channel and comment below if you have any questions or anything about this. I got a lot more details I can answer any questions about. So I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video.